technical problems. Why are you doing this, monitor? Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about another one of what I like to call my spoony shortcuts, which is makeup that you can do when you don't have a lot of energy, but you wanna do something, especially if you have to leave the house. And this is probably my favorite out of all of my shortcuts, mostly because we're gonna be using my favorite makeup product of all time, which is highlighters. I love highlighters. I have a weakness for highlighters. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how to choose the right highlighter for you and then at the end I'm going to do a thing on using some more unusual toned highlighters. I had put a poll up on Twitter uh, and blue was the color that won on the poll. It was between a blue highlighter and a green highlighter. Okay, so let's get started about highlighters. First thing before we actually discuss highlighters themselves, I wanna say a little bit about brushes. There are a couple different options you can use for putting on your highlighter. Now, I know some people use makeup sponges to put on their highlighters. That is fine if you have no wrinkles, no large pores, and no texture on your skin whatsoever. There is something about putting on highlighter, using a beauty blender, and it's not just me. I have heard this from other, and seen this on other YouTuber channels, Raw Beauty Christy, which if you don't know who she is, I absolutely adore Raw Beauty Christy. Big shout out to her, I love your channel. Um, she said something about this on her channel, and I literally was like, I thought I was the only person on the planet that also had this problem when using a beauty sponge to apply highlighter. I, I see texture I didn't even know that I had. I would not recommend putting on highlighter if you have any kind of skin issues. If your skin is perfect, without wrinkles, smooth as a baby's bottom, well, good for you. And I might hate you just a little bit, but go ahead and use a makeup sponge. But for the rest of us, spoonies and over 40 folks that have wrinkles and other issues, I recommend using a brush. Um, you've got a couple different options when it comes to brushes for highlighters. I'm going to show you the three that I have. The first one is a fan brush. This is great for precision. So if you really want to get highlight like right into a spot or especially on the nose because they tend to be thinner. Um, a lot of people will opt to use a fan brush to put on highlighter. Personally, it's not my favorite choice, but I do use it on occasion. The next one that I have, and this one's considered a, like a double duty, it is a highlighter slash contouring brush. Sometimes you'll see them. It's got kind of a, it's pointed, but it's got kind of a fluffier shape to it. Now this is nice, but it picks up a lot of product, and if you want to be precise, you really have to kind of just use the pointed end of it. Last but not least, you have an actual highlighter brush. Um, and this one's got, I don't know how well it's gonna show up. Let me see if I can, whoops, moving the wrong way. There we go. If you can see, so it's kind of thin. It's flat and floofy. So those are my technical terms, but a little thin. And I like it because this, it's sort of rounded and this part is a little bit flatter. So it's kind of like the best of both of these merged into one. Um, this one's actually e.l.f. It's not super expensive. I think it cost me like three bucks. I've used more expensive highlighter brushes in the past and I just don't like them as much as I like my inexpensive e.l.f. one. I just think this one does a better job of applying product. So you can get a highlighter brush for not a lot of money. Um, take a look at, you can look at Ulta, Target, even online, but you wanna look for something, in my opinion, that is domed and just a little bit more on the flat end of the spectrum. So this is the brush I'm gonna be using today. All right, let's get to the highlighters. 
Alrighty, so let's talk about how to choose a highlighter if you've never worn a highlighter before. The first thing you need to know is the undertone of your skin. There are a couple different ways that you can tell what your natural undertone is. The first one is the skin paper test, where you take a white piece of paper, go out into the sun. It's very important that you do this in natural sunlight. Do not do this indoors because color theory moment. All light, all man-made light emits different color frequencies. So for example, fluorescent light actually gives off green lighting. That's why you always look so terrible in fluorescent lights. Um, that's also why when you go into a dressing room, you will look better than you do when you get home because they do the lighting in high-end department stores in such a way to make you look healthier and happier. And they also tilt the mirrors to make you look thinner. It's a trick they use. So Sunlight is very important for this. Take an untanned, like your palm if you self-tan or the inside of your arm or whatever, lay it down on the white piece of paper, look at it in the sunlight. If your skin looks more orange or yellow in comparison to the white, you have a warm undertone. If your skin looks more pink or more blue in comparison to the white paper, then you have a cool undertone. The second way you can do this is what's called the vein test. So if you can actually see the veins in your arm and you look at them, if your veins are green, your skin has a warm tone to this. And the reason why your veins look green is because that yellow orange color is mixing with the blue of your blood and turning it green. If your veins look blue, then you are cool toned. The last and I think easiest way, because almost everybody knows this about themselves is what happens to you when you're exposed to sun? If you burn, you have cool undertones to your skin. If you tan easily, then you have warm undertones to your skin. Now I have fun little story time. When I was teaching at an art school, one of the things that I taught was rendering, which is basically the art of making things look realistic through color. And we spent a lot of time on rendering people and all the variety of skin tones that there are out there. And I had a student ask me when we were talking about skin undertones and we talked about the sunlight trick. She said, well, what about African Americans? Because they don't tan. Yeah. I know they say there are no stupid questions, but I kind of had that moment where I wanted to say to her, really? That's a stupid question. Everybody tans or burns, right? <sighs> the joys of teaching. Anyway, so fun, slightly frightening story that somebody had made it to that point in their education and still didn't understand how human skin functions the more you know, right? Okay, anyway. All right, so if you have cool undertones to your skin, you wanna to stick to colors like pink, which I know that sounds like it should be a warm tone, but in reality in highlighters, it's technically a cooler tone. Blues, purples, and silvers. If you have a warm undertone to your skin, then, and you want it to be more natural, you wanna to stick to golds, peaches, and even greens um, will work for your skin. So let's take a look at some of the collection that I have. And, and like I said before, anyone can wear any color of highlighter. So I do have a wide variety of colors here. Hi guys, ooh, crazy here. All right, I tried shooting this with the big camera and nothing came out right. So we're gonna do this on my smaller camera and get some close-ups so that you can actually see the products that I'm talking about. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna actually be not in the frame, like my face, so you can see the product because what good is my face gonna do? All right, I'm gonna start off talking about Wet n Wild. Wet n Wild makes some phenomenal um, highlighters. They're very inexpensive. They run anywhere between like five to I think seven bucks, depending on whether it's a pressed or a loose. This one is called Golden Flower Crown. It's a beautiful, gorgeous gold. It is on the warm end of the spectrum and I am cool toned, but like I said, just because you have a different undertone to your skin doesn't mean that you can't wear it. I mean, 
that's one swipe. Let me do two. So one of the things that I really like about Wet n Wild's formula is how buildable it is. I mean, look how much more, right? And this can, you can use this as an eyeshadow as well. So it really does a lot of, can do a lot of different jobs. Okay, this is another one by Wet n Wild. This is called Bloom Time. And I like this one, first of all, it's a true peach. A lot of the peach highlighters that I've tried in the past lean pink, this one stays peach. The other thing that's nice about this is it can double for a blush. So if you need a peach blush and you don't have one, this one will work as well. And it's lighter initially. I mean, you can see where it is, but it is lighter. So I find with it that really it does require a double swipe just because of the way the color is. All right, next up is this one. It's from a um, limited run. It, I believe it's still out. It's a summertime collection. It's called Crystal High. This one is, yeah, it's Crystal High. It's the, still the Mega Glow. It's a slightly different formula though. It's a cream to powder. And this is a amazing dupe for the Fenty Diamonds. Look at that. Look at that. Whoa. Look, one swipe. Look how great that is. It's so phenomenal that I keep thinking I need to get online and order another one so I have a backup because I, I love it that much. And I'm not ragging on Fenty or Rihanna, but when you're spending thousands of dollars on medicine every month, you really can't be. Uh... <laughs> spending 40 bucks on a highlighter. Okay, um, last from Wet n Wild, I have this. This is actually an eyeshadow trio, but it has this green in it that is a perfect match for, I had a green highlighter from Essence, and every time I go into Ulta, it's sold out. Um, so I've not been able to replace it. I broke it. But this is the exact same color. Um, you can tell that this is an eyeshadow pigment because it's a little crumblier on the finger than the highlighter would be naturally. So you do kind of have to blend it in a little bit just to get rid of the crumbles. Let me do a second swipe so you can see it just a little bit better. There we go. So there's the green. I mean, the color is a perfect dupe for the essence. I'll put, I'll put a picture of the essence up here so you can see what it looks like. I need to just uh, get online and order a bunch of stuff. Okay, let's see, what else? Next up is this one. This is by Too Cool and it's part of their um, Artist Palette series. It's a cute one, it's got three different colors in it. Um, sort of a golden beige, champagne, and then kind of a pinky brown. Now, while this is really nice, you can see it's they're tiny, right? So getting a precision swipe out of them is hard. I basically have to use a fan brush if I'm doing this, or my finger, or I wind up taking, you know, kind of an amalgam of all the colors. Um, the color payoff on them is really, really great though. Let's see. I'm gonna have to wipe my arm off and start again. Because that's like a little low and I don't know that it's gonna show. There it is. So that's that first color, that champagne color. Give me one second, I'm gonna wipe off my arm. There we go. So this is the middle color, which is more of a gold. So these are more subtle than the Wet n Wild highlighters. They definitely, you know, they're there, they have some shimmer, but they're not, I, they're not necessarily, and that's the pinky brown one. See that? A lot more subtle. It's a good product, very pretty, but not nearly as much, I think, as the Wet n Wild. All right, next up is the Milani. I showed this in my last video when I was talking about um, using unusual color lipsticks. They have two of these that come with three different colors in them, two different sets. I did not buy the other one simply because I already had 
most of those colors like the wet and wild kind of gold and the peach right so i didn't need it but this is an amazing product it's ten dollars and you get three different colors of a highlighter which i think is a fantastic deal um this first one is called this is the unicorn one i believe yeah unicorn dream and this is the one i'm gonna put this one on in the video just to show what a highlighter looks like without any makeup look how pretty that is Okay, the middle color is called, oh my goodness, I can't read it. Honestly, I need my, my glasses. Make-believe, okay, make-believe. Look at that. This is the color I'm gonna be using in the full face of makeup today, is that blue. It's not just gorgeous. So yummy. And then the last one is called, other world. <laughs> now this is probably the truest gold I have and I'm saying that comparing it to the gold in this one, the golden crown. This this one is gold, gold, gold. This one's got kind of more of a copper undertone to it. So this is a, look at that. One swipe. Very, very pigmented, really beautiful. And then last but certainly not least is this one. This is a uh, Makeup Revolution. It's their strobe highlighter. It comes in a lot of different colors. I picked this up completely on a whim. I was in Ulta. This was an impulse purchase. I should never be allowed anywhere there are highlighters because I wind up impulse buying. Um, this is a phenomenal purple highlighter. This has made me want to go out and get all of the other Makeup Revolution highlighters because it's so insanely pigmented. So beautiful. I mean, look at that. Yeah, I just, I absolutely love the formula of this. I love the way it looks and this again, I think it was like six bucks. You could use a coupon on it, so it's not very expensive. Highly recommend this one, the purple especially. Um, if you're looking for something in the more cool toned end of the spectrum. And like on me, I know it looks purple in the thing, but you can see on my skin because I have so much cool undertones. It's sort of a silver, silver pink with just a little bit of lilac in it, right? It's not... It's not super purple. I'm trying to like move it around so you can see it in the light. Okay. I appreciate you being patient with me filming it this way. I'm sorry, I'm having a lot of technical problems today. I will be back. Bye. Okay, I'm back. I've turned the lights up a little bit and I've pulled the camera in so that you can see how lovely I look with the bags under my eyes <laughs> and my yeah my kind of general looking worn because the whole point of this in part is to show you that highlighter can make a big difference I'm going to be using the the Milani highlighter and I'm going to be using shade Unicorn Dreams, which is the pink shade. I have cool undertones to my skin, so for a more natural look, I'm gonna go with pink. And I'm going to be using my actual highlighter brush as opposed to the fan or the more floofy brush, um, just because I prefer the applicator shape. So, I'm just gonna do this so you can see. This picks up quite a lot of product. Luckily, the Milani is, it's a little more she like sheer, I think, in application, so it's, it's more buildable. Uh, I'm gonna highlight places on my face that I wanna bring forward. So cheekbones, nose, chin, sometimes the cupid's bow, and a little bit of the forehead. I am going to avoid going up into here because I have fine lines, and putting a highlighter on top of where I have fine lines is akin to saying, Hey, look at my fine lines. So I avoid anywhere, like I said at the beginning of the video, that is too creased, too lined, um, just because I don't want to draw attention to that. Okay, real quick. I 
All right, so that took me less than a minute to do. Brightens up the face quite a lot. Now, if I feel like it's not enough, there is a trick. You take your highlighter up into where your dark circles are, just a tiny bit. You don't want to do the whole of the under eye. You want to just kind of go up right, like right under here, right where the bottom of the bag is going to meet your cheekbone. The reason why you don't want to do the whole under eye is, again, you don't want to catch wrinkles because it's going to draw more attention to them. But if you take it up just into the start of the bag, it's going to brighten up your eyes. Big difference. Much more of a glow. Now, if I wanted to be this, this pink is pretty. I mean, it's it, it's very pink, but I picked it because when I tested some stuff on camera earlier, I was worried that the pink that's in this one, it's so subtle that I didn't think it was going to show on, on camera. And this one I think is, at least when I'm moving, is showing up. Okay. Very, very simple, very easy, much more radiant, even though I still have, I, I mean, I still have the bags under my eyes, clearly. It's not like the highlighter is going to magically make you look 20 years younger. Uh, and buy you a new car. Woo. It, but it does make a difference. Um, and it, it's to the point now where a lot of times, like if I go see even family members, for example, my mother, I went to see her and I, I hadn't put any highlighter on. And she asked me if I was feeling okay because my skin looked dull. So if you sort of, if you make it a usual part of your routine, even when you're feeling awful, um, it reads as healthier, it reads as great, more awake, which is nice. So you're less likely to have people commenting because the last thing any of us want when we go out into public and we feel like crap is to have someone ask us if we're okay, because if you look that bad, like, just don't ask. All right, I'm gonna pull the camera out real quick and let you see. Okay, so here we go. This is the look from a distance. Pretty subtle. I mean, for as much as that pink looks like it's gonna be like in the face, it really, it just gives me a nice soft glow that makes me look a little bit healthier than I am uh, without me having to put on foundation or concealer or any of those things. The other really great thing about highlighter is, I mean, I took it up into my brow bone to kind of highlight and give my face a little more shape, but this can double as eyeshadow. Um, you could put it on your eyes. You can put it on the inner corners of your eyes to brighten, brighten up that area of the eye as well. So it's one of those products that can do a lot of things. And I often say to people that are new to makeup and they ask me like, what product should I buy after concealer? Highlighter is the next one that I'm like, if, and as I said at the beginning of the video, if I could only have one makeup product forever, it would be highlighter. That's, that's how much I love highlighters. Okay. If you're going to take a quick pause, I'm going to get this off of my face, pull my hair back, and then I'm going to do a full face and I'm going to put on this blue highlighter since that's what won the poll. Okay, clean face. I'm gonna be doing a look using um, this little palette. It's by Hala Kahala. Um, it's called Lazy Enjoy. I'll link it in the description box down below. It's a beautiful brown matte. Um, it does have one kind of shimmer shade in it, but it has some gorgeous kind of matte brown tones in it. I really like it, it's very versatile. So I'm gonna use this alongside the blue highlighter to do my look. So I'm just gonna go ahead, full face of makeup. I'm gonna put this on fast forward 
so you guys aren't bored out of your minds, but can still kind of see what I do. All right, here we go. finished as you can see I took a little bit of the highlighter into my lip product as well this is back to that continuity thing that I talked about in my last video right where even though clearly this is this is blue highlighter it's not gonna not be blue highlighter um, I wanted a little more sameness I also took it into the inner corner of my eyes and onto my brow bone I just think this color looks absolutely beautiful with a brown eye look it's it's actually one of my favorites to do especially if I don't mind looking like I'm I'm wearing blue highlighter which honestly I am that person that will leave the house wearing blue or green highlighter I have 
no problems with that. I'm gonna bring it in just a little close so you can see how it looks around the eyes for a second. Okay. There we go. A little bit of an extreme close up, but. Gives you a better idea of what it looks like. I think it's really pretty. That's my personal opinion, but I love the look of this. All right, that's about it for me today. If you could just take a second, hit the thumbs up button. If you've not done so already, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. I'm uploading about twice a week or so, depending upon my health. If there's anything in particular you would like to see me do, let me know in the comment box down below, or you can hit me up over on Twitter. You can follow me on Snapchat and Instagram as well if you'd like. So I hope all of you are happy and healthy and well rested and are remembering that self-care is the most important care. I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.